I'm going to do a real quick study here on Jesus Christ is the just one. I find that very interesting wording. Um, because when you get right down to it, this whole Trinity Godhead debate thing, uh, it's not just a thing of I'm trying to prove Trinitarian doctrine wrong and look at me, I'm right, they're wrong. It's about magnifying the Lord Jesus Christ and glorifying Him as the only one God. There's only one Lord. There's only one God. And Jesus Christ is the just one. Let me show you. Turn in your King James Bible to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. Acts chapter 3, verse 13. A little bit windy out here today. So I'm having some help with turning my pages. <laughs> Acts chapter 3, verse 13. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Okay? You see a bunch of interesting things there, kind of titles of Jesus Christ there. He's the Holy One, and just. Hmm. He's the Holy One. Hear, O Israel, our Lord, the Lord our God is one. You see? Not three. Right? And you say, but, the, but 1 John 5, 7. Yeah, three that bear record in heaven. And these three are one. Okay? And I understand that there are people that believe in the Godhead doctrine, but they try to blend it with Trinitarian uh, language, extra-biblical language. I understand that. Okay? My attacks are not directed at those people. They're messed up. I used to say Trinity. I used to say some other things too. Persons. Uh, then the Lord really started to convict me of that. And what does the Bible actually teach? The Bible doesn't teach persons. The Bible doesn't teach Trinity. All right? But here's the whole thing. Trinitarians are liars. The real Trinitarians, the ones that are hardcore Trinitarians, they will lie right to your face. Because they say, I believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. Okay? And then you say, well, then you believe in three different gods. No, we only believe in one God. Oh, so then the Father and the Son are one and the same? No, they're two separate persons. So there are, two, there are three separate persons, two separate Father, Son, but then the Holy Spirit comes in there. So that's three separate persons, but they're not three separate gods. How does that even make sense? Well, it doesn't. It's just a mystery. We're, we're, you're just supposed to understand it as a mystery. No, I understand it as, as being a rather messed up system that God had nothing to do with. All right? So when you get a Trinitarian, a real true one, and they say, we don't believe in three gods, they're lying to you. Do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit? Yes, but they're only one God. You're lying. You're lying. You just named three gods. Okay? You are a deceiver. You are a liar. If you are a Trinitarian and you hold to that whole mess, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, you just named three separate gods by the rules of simple mathematics. Okay? I have a truck, I have a car, and a van. But I only have one vehicle. No, 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 no. It's the same vehicle. No, they're three separate vehicles, but it's only one vehicle. You're a cuckoo. Brain dead. Flat lining. Beep. You know. <sighs> Jesus Christ is the just one. Well, he's the just one, and, 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 and you know, the, I mean, think about what that's saying. If Jesus Christ is the just one, that's a singular, it's definitive article. The just one. Okay? Is the, whole, is, is the Holy Spirit not just? Is the Father not just? Jesus is the just one? The Holy One? That's a singular reference to one being. If Jesus Christ is the just one, the Holy One, then the Father and the Spirit are both outside of that. It's not that difficult. Acts chapter 7. You know, I, I realize, by the way, too, that uh, those of us that, that 
preach and teach about the Godhead. Um, the Trinitarians are, are basically at the point where they can't answer our arguments anymore because the Lord's just shown us so much. And uh, they're just kind of trying to ignore us and they're saying, oh, they're twisting the scriptures and things. You see, that proves that they're Catholic. They're papist. Maybe not openly professing, but they're papist in their mentality. Because, see, a papist gets to a point where they can't answer the heretic and they just say, oh, you're a heretic or an arch heretic and you just, you're confused, you're mentally ill, you need help, or you should probably just be executed. You've been turned over to a reprobate mind because, you see, they can't answer you anymore. And we're getting to that point now with the Trinitarians. They're giving up even trying to answer us now because they can't, excuse me, because they can't. They can't answer us. Acts chapter 7, verse 51 through 53, because it's the Lord speaking through us, by the way, not our own talents. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Trinitarians resist the Holy Ghost. It's funny because they leave Him out a lot. The Father and the Son, the Father and the Son, you know. Interesting. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. Hmm. Interesting. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the disp disposition of angels and have not kept it. The coming of the just one. Is the Father not just? Is the Holy Spirit not just? Oh, well, no, they're just two. Or just three, I guess. You know, they're, they're, they're also just. Where does the Bible say that? Like I did the video a while back, a year or so ago, whatever, and I said about how Jesus Christ says, there's none good but, you know, save one. And that is God. Why callest thou me good? There's none good but, but God. Jesus is not saying, I'm not good. He's just simply saying, are you calling me good because you think I'm a nice guy? Or are you calling me good because you understand I'm God? Holy and completely God. There's none good but God. You see? There's just the just one. There's not three separate gods up in heaven. Acts chapter 22. Turn there. My automatic page turner is working a little bit too good. Acts chapter 22, verse 1. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he saith. By the way, let me just stop there. Verse 2, Acts chapter 22, verse 2, is a great one that you can use to refute anybody that says, no, um, no translation can be inspired. Um, the book of Acts was written in Greek. But Paul spoke in Hebrew. So in the original autograph, it would have been translated into Greek from Paul speaking in Hebrew. So if no translation can be inspired, then that means that the original autographs couldn't have been inspired. You get right down to it, the new version people with all their higher textual criticism, Alexandrian school of philosophy type thinking, uh, they're atheists. They don't believe that God could inspire a book. And they certainly don't believe that they can have a copy of it today. But let's continue. Verse 3. I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prison both men and women. So also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders... From, which, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them, uh, which were then there bound unto Jerusalem, for to be punished. And it came to pass that as I made my journey, and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell unto the ground, and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art, who art thou, Lord? Was Jesus, was was. Saul calling out to Jesus? No, he would have been saying, Who art thou, Lord? He's thinking about the Father. Saul was persecuting people that believed in Jesus. 
But you see, he's confused and he says, Who art thou, Lord? Hmm. And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. Jesus didn't say, um, well, okay, let me clarify here, uh, Saul. Um, who art thou, Lord? Okay, well, I am Jesus, God the Son. Okay, I realize you were probably in your mind thinking of my daddy, God the Father. Okay, because we're both Lord, you see. But, you know, we're two separate Lords, but yet one and the same Lord. Okay, Paul, you got there, Saul? Excuse me. You, you, you got that, Saul? Okay, I know you said Lord, but let me just tell you which one I am. <laughs> Verse 9, And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? Well, no. <laughs> He's persecuting people that believe in Jesus. Why would he call him Lord? Who art thou, Lord? I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. What should I, shall I do, God the Son? What shall I do, most holy second member of the Trinity? <laughs> what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see... For the glory of that light, we'll talk more about the glory of the Lord in another study, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee. The God of our fathers? Who's the God of the, the Jewish people there? God the Father. But no, it was just Jesus who he was talking to. Uh, the God of our fathers hath chosen thee. Jesus is the one that sent me here. Do you think that that might mean that Jesus is the God of our fathers? God the Father, in other words? You see, oh, oh, you're trying to prove yourself. You're always going after the Trinity. I'm trying to magnify Jesus Christ. I'm trying to glorify Jesus Christ. Unlike the Trinitarians that are always trying to rip him down from his throne of glory. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one. He saw him. Who did, Jesus, who did Paul see? Who did Saul see on the road to Damascus? Did he see uh, the, the God the Father? No, he saw Jesus. Maybe he saw the little white bird called the Holy Spirit. I uh, know he saw Jesus. And he makes no difference. He doesn't say, well, yes, I, I did see God the, the Son. But God the Spirit and God the Father, I haven't seen them yet. I'm, I'm hoping to. See that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. <laughs> we could talk about that one too. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance and saw him saying unto me. Saw who? Uh, God. Jesus. Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, God the Son, they know that I am... Pre I'm sorry, I didn't read that right. And they said... Second member of the Trinity. Uh, no, I didn't read it. I said it, you know. I didn't read that right either. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew me, or slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles.
why didn't uh, Saul there, they are known as Paul, why didn't he make any kind of difference between the Father and Jesus Christ? You think maybe it's because they're one and the same being? And you can call them both Lord? Yeah, I think so. Jesus Christ is the just one. Um, Trinitarians, let me give you a little bit of advice. Uh, you need to drop this pagan nonsense, this philosophy that's spoiling you. I had to lower my pride enough to say, you know what, I was wrong saying Trinity all those years. I was wrong to say persons. I should never have done that. I lowered my pride enough to come out and say, I was wrong. You're wrong, Trinitarians. You don't have a leg to stand on. Think about what you're doing. You are radically defending a whole system of words. Trinity, God the Father, God, well, God the Father is in there. God the Son, God the Spirit, uh, three persons, um, Trinitarian, triune, no scripture. You are, you are literally defending words that, that were added. And I know they're not added in the sense of written in the scriptures, but the point is you're, you're having to add things to the Bible to make sense of the Bible. That's very, very serious. Read Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 through 19. Okay, you're going to be in big trouble. I'm warning you. If you have a pride issue, if you're saved and you just won't let go of this thing, there's some major pride. Um, if you keep holding on to this Trinitarian thing and you're not repenting of it, you're lost. Just as simple as that. You are demoting Jesus Christ. This ministry is glorifying Jesus Christ. And uh, that's why I'm continuing, by the way. That's why the Lord continues to keep us going. All you Trinitarian heretics out there and the people that hate this ministry and everything else, you all say, who is Denley accountable to? God. And the brethren as well, but ultimately to God. If I'm such a rotten, stinking heretic, why hasn't the Lord stopped this ministry? Because I glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and I glorify His Word. You will never see me stand here and say, it's all about me. Let me just put this Bible down on the ground. It's all about me. It's all... Never. Never. It's not about me. I'm just a servant of Jesus Christ. And all I am here for, the purpose of me being on YouTube yet, is to glorify Jesus Christ and turn people to this blessed book right here. King James Version. King James Video Ministries. Not Denlinger Incorporated, Denlinger and Sons in ministry. Never, never, never. Brian Denlinger University. No, not like Bob Jones University or whatever. Never. There will never be an official church of Denlinger or Denlingerins or something, or Denlingerites or whatever. That stuff is all things that you devil-possessed people have come up with. None of us. None of the people, my friends in the ministry and things like that, none of them go around calling themselves after my name. Please repent. Because you're going to stand before Jesus someday and you're going to bow the knee to Him. And you're not going to see three separate gods up there. You might see the separation between the body and the soul and the spirit, certainly. He's God, He can do that. But uh, you're not going to see three separate persons. You're not going to see three separate gods. You've believed a lie. Jesus is that just one. Saul made no difference. He didn't say, well, okay, now who am I talking to here? Am I talking to God the Father or God the Son? Lord, who art thou? I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. Oh, a God the Son. Okay, I get it. Okay, Lord. Just one. I suggest you get right with God today.